Hello friends, today I'm going to speak about uh, the uh, about insulin and its uh, uh, proper uh, way of injection and this is quite important because many people you know uh, they don't follow proper techniques so and uh, because of that uh, they don't get uh, the proper benefits of uh, insulin or they don't have proper control of blood sugar because of this uh, main reason of uh, um, I don't know, no, 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 no proper practice of insulin injections and in that I'm going to tell you about uh, other major aspects about insulin which you are supposed to know and when uh, we say about insulin we have to know about uh, the types of insulin the uh, time to inject time to inject in a day and where to inject and how to store insulin and how to transport insulin. Suppose you're going from one place to another in a flight, how to transport insulin and when to change the needles of the syringe or the needle of the pen and how to inject the actual technique of it. The types of insulin, if you see, there are about four types mainly nowadays. Previously, we used to have uh, other insulins, but now we have pre mixed insulins which are actually. 30 bar 70 or 50 bar 50 and these injections we have to take twice a day you know twice a day and the second one is pre-mixed analog insulin pre-mixed analog insulins are almost uh, acting similar to your uh, uh, secretion of insulin in the body so they don't have much of uh, side effects and nowadays preferred ones are the analogs and the main um, a reason we avoid that is because of its cost is high and uh, the third one we have is short acting insulin which have about four or uh, five, six hours action and we have to take it at least uh, two or three times a day and even at four, at four times can also be taken when you are uh, admitted in hospital and all <clears throat> then the fourth type is called long acting insulin large insulin which we have to take once in a day only once in a day and they don't have uh, uh, you know uh, any relation with uh, the food and uh, all these injections are available in uh, bottle form or in cartridge form which you are uh, supposed to use in pens and all these type of insulin you not worry doctor will be prescribing you but the type of insulin uh, you should know because when to inject you should know that is an important thing and timing of insulin when to inject all the pre-mixed insulin especially the 30 bar 70 or 50 bar 50 should be injected half an hour before food why we say that is see when you inject insulin into the skin it will take almost about 30 minutes that means 20 to 30 minutes to get absorbed and slowly the the amount of insulin in the blood will rise and when you eat food the peak of your rise of sugar is almost at the, level, at the two hours interval and same that time your insulin also should reach the blood so to synchronize the elevation of sugar and the absorption of insulin you have to inject the insulin about half an hour this is the reason so many people um, you know um, inject pre-mixed insulins after food when, when you do that what is going to happen is after about two and a half to three hours the peak of the insulin will be there so naturally the chances of having hypoglycemia is more if you don't inject insulin half an hour before food so that is important for pre-mixed insulins short acting insulins short acting insulins and analog insulins should be injected just just before food you know you can inject the insulin and immediately you can have food so that is important that is the advantage of uh, having short acting insulin or analogs and the last one long acting insulin can be injected at uh, any time of the day but if you are injecting at one time in a day you have to take the long acting insulins every day in that time so that is important that means if you are taking at nine o'clock in the night every day at nine o'clock you have to take that is the long acting insulin now the site of insulin site of insulin also is important because the morning insulin should be usually injected on the abdomen on the abdomen why this is the abdomen has got a very positive area 
and they will have, you can inject uh, straight away and the, the chances of uh, going into the muscle and other things are very very less if you have abdomen the injection on the abdomen and uh, the evening injection should be either taken on the thigh or on the arm why this is when you inject the insulin morning insulin on the arm or the thigh what is going to happen is you start walking you know see that time you will be going for your walk or you will be uh, moving around in the house so that time the absorption of the insulin will become faster because of the high amount of blood flow into your thighs and arm so naturally what happens is the insulin will get absorbed faster and uh, the peak of the insulin will be usually at a faster speed that means you are supposed to get the peak at 2 hours but you might get it as 1 1 and a half hours and one more problem is when you are taking two times insulin the insulin is supposed to act for 12 hours so if you take a, a morning insulin on the thigh the absorption will become faster and the required time action duration of time action will not be 12 hours it will be less than that so that is also a problem so we have to take the morning insulin of all pre-mixed insulin on the abdomen and the evening insulin should be either on the thigh or on the arm and when you inject you have to change the sides rotate the sides we tell that that means if you are injecting insulin on sundays it would be monday should be a second side so tuesday should be a third side like that you should start changing the injection site this is important because once you inject insulin at the same site every day what is going to happen is the injection site will become skin will become thick naturally you know because you are going to have scar there and one more thing what can happen is the subcutaneous fat which is there at the site of injection might get fibrosed atrophied and the absorption of the insulin become less you know so you may not get the required absorption uh, or control of blood sugar if you inject at the same site every day so you have to rotate the site that is also important and always remember when you open the bottle of the insulin write the date on the bottle of the insulin why this is see every insulin nowadays all human insulins are dna recombinant insulins and they have half life for one month after opening that means if you open the bottle today after 30 days you have to discard it if you're not keeping it in the fridge okay and uh, this is important because see after one month see, you use insulin today and after that for some time for some reason the doctor will tell you not to use insulin and you keep it like that for longer duration of time naturally the insulin become uh, less active and you may not get the required benefits of insulin and uh, once you take the insulin bottle after writing the date on it you are supposed to roll the insulin bottle on your hand for about 10 times okay why this is the pre-mixed insulins are usually cloudy insulin See, if you look into the bottle it will be cloudy uh, you know it will be like uh, rice water or milky in color and that milky thing is because of the sediments and that and you have to properly mix that insulin on your hand by rolling it you are not supposed to shake the insulin you are not supposed to shake it once you shake it it will get crystallized and the the action of the insulin will become reduced and uh, always uh, uh, do practice this and uh, the site of the injection should be cleaned before you inject either with spirit or with any other uh, disinfectant or antiseptic solution can be used and better with spirit you know the spirit will get up but evaporated faster and the site will be much clean and uh, the third the the thing next is uh, you should know is the type of insulin syringes available for you we have two types of insulin syringes available one is the 40 units insulin syringes and 100 unit insulin syringes these 40 units insulin syringes are used for insulins which are available in 40 units per ml 40 units per ml so if you take a bottle of the uh, insulin bottle it will be written 40 units and if you take a hundred units uh, insulin on the bottle it will be written 100 so when you're injecting 40 units insulin you have to use the 40 units uh, syringes 
and 100 units quartan uh, should be insulin should be used with 100 unit insulin syringes so that you should not change and why this is uh, because many times people come from uh, uh, the uh, Gulf countries and there uh, they have available 100 unit syringes you know this happened to one of my patients and they get uh, uh, in huge number you know 100 units of will be easily available for them and when they come they bring it and here when they come they buy 40 units insulin and they inject this 40 units insulin in 100 units syringes. so that is going to have have uh, you know uh, less uh, benefit for the patient so this you should keep in mind now while injecting you know many people try to uh, uh, pinch up the skin you know they just lift up the skin like that if you're doing that it is fine but when you're doing that you should always uh, hold it at a, uh, a, se a little separate you know so finger should be at a little different distance and not very close like that okay so uh, nowadays the needles which come are very very uh, 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 short you know they are just 0.5 to 0.6 millimeters so naturally if you inject it, it is going to go under the skin only it will not go into the muscles so you can be uh, safe uh, injecting straight into the skin without pinching and after injecting you immediately should not withdraw you know to remove the needle so you wait for about two seconds so that the entire uh, insulin gets in you know the needle size if you see the, the, the bore of the needle is so small so it may not go that fast into the skin uh, into into the body so you have to wait slowly inject and wait for about one or two seconds before you take at the uh, syringe and after removing a small amount of bleeding can be there and that is quite naturally you not know, worry about that and if uh, if there is bleeding you can just press that area you know just hold your finger and press it there for about one or two seconds and that'll be fine and uh, always remember you're not supposed to massage the area which is uh, injected you know? insulin massaging is not advisable at all you should not supposed to do and coming to storing of the insulin when you store insulin always make sure you store it on the uh, uh, door of the fridge you know door of the fridge not just immediately under the uh, freezer okay and why this is once the insulin is frozen okay once it is frozen or over uh, uh, suppose it comes to about one or two degrees insulin is supposed to be stored at four to eight degrees centigrade okay so if you come to zero degree so when it's become frozen what is going to happen it will become again crystallized and the potency of the insulin will be lost and you will not have any benefit uh, later when you inject it so always make sure it is stored on the door of the fridge now about pens i i have told you about syringes naturally pens also must be explained and i will be uh, showing that in a different video how to use how is pen used what are the parts of the pen that be explained in a different video the insulin now available are all human insulins dna recombinant insulins as i've told you and these insulins are potent for one month in room temperature so that you should know so every time you need not keep the, the, the insulin in the refrigerator and the country you know recurrent uh, uh, again 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 you 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 make it cold make it room temperature so like that it is not advisable so you can keep it in the room temperature where there is no direct sunlight or heat that is the only thing and this insulin will be potent for one month and uh, suppose you have what four or five vials and you want to store it first then always make sure you store that insulin on your refrigerator door and uh, transporting insulin also sometimes very commonly because we people we travel and we want to carry insulin with you when you travel in flight and all things so you should always make sure it is packed in an ice pack or in an ice box and the temperature should be at least maintained for about uh, eight to ten hours okay and uh, the you, you, in, when you travel in the flight you always make sure you carry it in your handbag not in the luggage because the luggage room of the flights are in minus temperatures and naturally your insulin get frozen and you have to throw it away so i've told you and make sure you carry your insulins in the handbag of the uh, or in the cabin bag bag of the flight now many people ask me about when are you supposed to change the needle of the pen or the syringe so it is 
as uh, taught uh, the syringes and the needles are for single use okay single use but uh, being uh, you know a country like ours we can uh, use it for uh, about six or eight times depending on the way you use it uh, because repeated using can cause contaminate one thing is that and the sharpness of the needle also will go and um, try to uh, use the needle or syringe uh, as many uh, less number of times as possible and always make sure you keep the cap of the needle always tightly closed when you are repeatedly using it that is very really important now the problems of the insulin uh, if you see there are so many other so many, uh, problems uh, that people might tell but the main problem with insulin is hypoglycemia hypoglycemia is a condition where the blood sugar will become low and it is less than 65 65 and uh, uh, once it is less than 65 the people will feel uh, uh, excessive uh, hunger okay excessive hunger sweating weakness giddiness and sometimes if it is not treated properly the person can become uh, unconscious also so you it is important very important for you to recognize it and treat it okay so that you should keep in mind and there is one more condition which is called hypoglycemic unawareness that is again important because see once a person gets hypoglycemia frequently frequently that person may not have symptoms of hypoglycemia especially the hunger the sweating the giddiness and weakness nothing will be felt you know so such people once they fall unconscious only people will know that he is having hypoglycemia that you should keep in mind and that should be taken care of and other smaller uh, uh, side effects of insulin are the swelling at the side we inject and there can be itching, there can be redness, there can be sometimes infection if you're not properly taking care of the insulin site and uh, that is possible but they, they are all meager uh, you know, uh, adverse effects and uh, one more thing is your weight gain you know and uh, this weight gain is uh, probably because the food you eat will directly become uh, stored because of the presence of insulin so you have to always make sure you stick on your diet while injecting insulin and prevent from gaining weight so that is it about uh, the uh, major factors now i'm going to show you uh, how to uh, inject insulin by a video please see that for injecting insulin we need to have a spirit swab the insulin and the syringes first uh, take the insulin remove the cap and take it in between your palm and slowly roll for about 10 times which I've already told you to mix it properly and also to bring the temperature back to normal if you have kept it inside the fridge. Now keep it aside take the syringe the syringe has got a red cap in the front and a white cap behind for the piston you remove the piston cap now if you see if you remove the piston you can see that uh, black colored rubber bush is coming back and you will see the markings on the syringe we have one two three up to five and then six seven eight and ten and the five and ten will be larger lines and in between we have smaller lines and finally it is reaching 15 and 20 i have kept it on 20 now and this syringe and the, the insulin it will be written 40 units and that you have to see and that insulin should be injected with this syringe only in that also it will be written 40 units for 40 iu this is a syringe which is 100 iu and this is the one which is used for 100 iu uh, insulin and we are not going to use it we are going to use the 40 unit syringe and now you remove the red cap and now it is ready for use and slowly remove the the piston slowly backwards and you can see the black colored uh, black colored rubber bush at 14 units so now i'm going to 40, uh, inject 40 so i have kept the uh, pulled air at 14 and what i'm going to do is straight perpendicular you know straight i'm going to inject 
the needle through the center of the rubber bush on the bottle and I'm going to inject the air into the bottle. I've injected the entire air into the bottle. Now we are going to keep it upside down and we are going to slowly pull the piston of the syringe. Slowly. You have to do it slowly because if you pull it faster, air might enter into the syringe and your amount of insulin might reduce. And slowly, see, now I have kept at 14 units. So every time you should follow this. So now slight amount of air is there. If at all air is there, you can again inject it back again and then come back slowly. So like that you can remove the air bubbles in the, in the syringe. So now it is at 14 and you are going to remove. While removing also you have to pull it out straight without uh, bending the needle. So after that keep the insulin away, bottle away. Now you are going to hold it like a pen and you are going to inject. I am just going doing it on a, a, board, or a board and you are going to cl clean it and then while injecting also you are going to inject perpendicular and you are going to hold it you know stabilize with the left hand or the right hand and you are going to inject slowly. While injecting also you are going to inject it very slowly so that the medicine does not go like a jet in your body okay and you hold it for about one or two seconds uh, until the entire amount of insulin goes back into the bottle into the body and remove it while removing also make sure it is uh, straight uh, down it is removed and keep the cap put the cap and keep it as well so that you can use it later so that is it about the injections of insulin so uh, always try to practice uh, the proper uh, insulin techniques so that it will be always beneficial for you and all the best and uh, thank you very much for watching the video.